Good morning and welcome to Lord of the Harvest. I am uh, Rob, this is my wife Andrea. We're part of the pastoral team for those of you who are new at Lord of the Harvest. Um, normally on Sundays at this time, what we do is we come together at our family has been leading worship here at the building. But um, unfortunately, our daughter Allison's dog had to have an emergency surgery this week, so she's home taking care of him. So that means that this week's act of worship is that Andrea and I are going to just take some time to lead our church in a time of prayer. What we're going to do is honestly, this has been on my heart for a while, and since we're doing a time of prayer today, there is no better place to pray than out of scripture than where, when you see Jesus pray. Today, I'm gonna to be reading John 17. Before we pray, there's a couple of key points that the Lord just kind of put on my heart, but we're gonna read this passage and then we're gonna pray into it for not only for Lord of the Harvest, but for the church the church at large. So John 17 is, um, I'm like I said, I'm reading in the ESV today. You, can, you don't have to. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in, the, know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have, sent, have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you had given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has hated, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so they may also be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. 
Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know, know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love which, with which you have loved me may also be in them, and I in them. So there are just three key things that I noticed out of this as I read it um, several times. And, you know, I've talked about it really week after week as, as we've opened um, worship times. I've talked about just seeing things, you know, you see a lot of tension, a lot of stress right now in our world. And, you know, it, it just really, it breaks my heart. And there's a lot of, it, a lot of, because of that tension, there's a lot of division and a lot of misunderstanding about you. And one of those, one of the first things that really struck me out of this passage, and it's, it's obvious that I'm going to pray for, you know, want to pray for unity, which is a big thing what Jesus is talking about, that, you know, being one in him. But get this right out of the first verse. You know, he says this, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Right out of the first verse, he's like, Lord, give me something that I'm going to give right back to you. And it blows me away that it's constantly, he models never keeping something for himself. He takes everything the Father gives him and he gives it to us and he gives it right back to the Father by, by his giving it to us. And he's never taking anything for himself. And that's something that I think the church really right now, you know, with, with all the things going on in the church, we need to get that. And we need to get that so that we can become one in him. The other thing, we'll just pray and, and we'll get through all three of them by the time we finish praying. So with that, we're going to take a few minutes to pray before, before the actual service comes on and uh, go from there. So, but Father God, we just come before you in Jesus' name and we look at how you prayed and we thank you so much that you took everything the Father gave you and you turned around and gave it to us so that you could glorify the Father and that you kept nothing for yourself. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you would teach your church right now how to glorify you. Lord, we often come to you asking to be filled with your Spirit and we come to you asking for power on high to, to do this or do that, to break strongholds or this or that. And I think we so often miss the mark because we ask those things that you would get us out of problems. And that's the second point, Lord, that's in this passage. Lord, we just ask that you would show us how to take what you've given us and give it right back to you by pouring it out to others. Lord, we just pray that in this hour, with all the tensions going on, there's so much. There's pandemics, there's, there's strife between ethnicities, there's tensions about governmental powers, there's, there's tensions between countries right now, there's so many things going on. Lord, we, have missed the mark and we've gotten caught up in those things as though those things are the important things. But Lord, you say glorify me that I may glorify, give it right back to you by giving it to the people that you've sent me to. Lord, fill us with your spirit that we may glorify you 
by lifting others up and speaking the gospel and preaching the gospel in this hour and showing a love that's unlike anything the world has ever seen, Lord. Lord, we don't ask that you'd raise us up to the high seat at the table. Lord, we ask that you would give us what we need to give out to the world that needs you. Lord, we ask that you would just fill us so that we can just pour out what you've given us, Lord, so that the world can see you. And Lord, we just put these things in your hands. Lord, we know that we are we are called to live in this world, but we are not called to be of this world. We are not mm -hmm. called to to embrace the things of the world as if they are the things of your kingdom. And Lord, just we just ask for the church in this hour for all of us who follow you that we would our focus would be on you, mm -hmm. on furthering your kingdom for your glory, on showing people your love, showing people who you are, showing people hope and mm -hmm. life and freedom. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just, we need to be, we need to focus on you, Jesus, in this hour. We need to be, um, we need to be totally focused on you. And, and we need to live in the world still because this is where you've placed us. But Lord, as we're living in the world, we need to embrace your kingdom and your, mm -hmm. your, we, need, we live here, but we live in your kingdom. We are part of your kingdom, the kingdom of, of God, and that's how we need to live. So Lord, show us how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I just ask that we would just put our foolishness aside, put our division aside, put our, our opinions <laughs> below, put our opinions at your feet, at the foot of the cross, Lord, that you can, you can uh, straighten us out, Lord. Mm -hmm. We need to, we need to have your opinions, not our opinions. We need to not walk in fear. Mm -hmm. We need to walk in victory, the victory that you bought for us on the cross, Lord. We just thank you so much for your sac sacrifice and for your victory, Lord. And we need to, we want to walk in that. We want to walk the way you walked. We want to do what the Father says to do. We want to hear and see what the Father says to hear and see. We don't want to see things through our own filters and through our own opinions, our own experiences. We want to see them through the Holy Spirit. We want to walk in wisdom and walk in freedom and walk in truth and love and hope. Lord, Andrea brought up division. Lord, your word says, you know, that, that I, you and me and I, I and you, you know, and, and they are in me. That, me, you know, you, you talk about being one so much in this passage as you pray. Lord, break the power of division in your church in this hour. Lord, there's so many misconceptions about you right now that, that are just swirling about. And you can see it in, in people's reaction to media, and you can see it in social media, you can see it everywhere. Lord, break the powers of division. Lord, I just truly believe that we have missed you so much when it comes to this, being one in you. Lord, remind us that when you came to earth to break the power of the enemy, you did it by laying down your life and by, by suffering and by, by serving and by being nothing. Lord, and we're sitting here thinking because you've already won the victory, and this is all true, Lord, these are the things that I'm going to say, but we're thinking it amiss because we're thinking because you've won the victory that Everything we do or say is right because we're covered in the blood. But Lord, we're not always in the spirit. 
Lord, help us to be in the Spirit. Fill us with your Spirit that we would, that we would be one and that we would walk in a victory that we have not understood, but start to understand it, Lord, that we would be willing, like you said, that second thing that you put on my heart, to suffer, Lord, that we would be willing to, to suffer for you, Lord, that we wouldn't sit and demand dominion over everything but that we would truly be willing to lay down our lives because our love for the lost to come to you because our love for you is greater than anything and our love for the lost is, is rooted in that very first verse. Give, glorify me that I may glorify you and that we would just pour everything out, Lord, to you rather than thinking that our opinions are right and our this is right and our that is right and, and missing and hiding, you know, there's all these negative connotations, Lord, a social justice warrior, this, that, or the other. But Lord, at the same time, there are true social problems in this country because we have not bowed the knee to see you. Lord, open our eyes that we would see you in those things and rather than, than be blind to them, Lord, that we would embrace you and that we would ask for you to glorify us, that we would glorify you by being people of peace that would break the social injustices in our country. You have everything going on right now, Lord. You continually bring issues between ethnicity into this country for us, your church here, to see something, Lord, we just pray that you'd that we would see it and that we would, instead of fighting it, that we would be one with you, Lord. And I, I always think about how you use the Canaanite woman, you use the Samaritan woman at the well, you use the Roman centurion, you use all these things, Lord, to continue to, to confront the scales in our eyes when it comes to racism and, and, and problems between ethnicities. Lord, you're doing it now with borders. You're doing it now with continued case after case after case of things like George Floyd, Lord. Show us what you're, what you're trying to show us and Lord, open our eyes and our hearts and our ears to learn Lord, what you're trying to show us. And then fill us with your spirit that we may break those things to glorify you and bring a testimony that the world would know we're your disciples because we're bringing a different testimony and it's not what the left says and it's not what the right says, but it's what the true kingdom of God says. Show us how to break these problems, Lord, and let us not have these problems highest attitudes about all these different things that thinking that because they fit to our paradigm that you are fitting to our paradigm. Lord, break us of all of our paradigms so that we would see you and what you're truly doing in this hour and that you would have your say and that you would show us what being one truly is. Lord, we just, we just, we don't want to be dumb anymore. Lord, we want to be yours. And Lord, where we haven't been yours, we just ask that you would just forgive us for not being yours in these areas. Lord, and 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 Lord, as you do the surgery on our hearts in these areas, that you would just bring us into oneness with you and that you would show us what you want us to do and that we would walk it out, Lord, that your name would be glorified. Lord, we've been reading in Isaiah and um, one of the earlier, earlier sections that we read just struck me about how we create things and then we turn them into idols. Lord, we, you know, we create our, we create whatever, it talks about the blacksmith creating something and then 
you know, turning it to idol, but really what he's worshiping is, <clears throat> is ash because the things we create get used up. They're not, we don't even create anything apart from you. And Lord, just break the idols that we have created mm -hmm. that have separated us from others, from people that have caused us to be worry about ourselves rather than others, rather than people as a whole, Lord, that, that, that spirit of sectarianism and individualism that mm -hmm. we just, we, our opinions and our, what we believe, what we, what we see really through the filter of our idols, through the filter of nationalism, culturalism, our own personal experience, our own studies that, you know, Lord, just break, break those things out of us, Lord, as a body, so that we can be the body of Christ, that we can be who you've called us to be. We are the ones who should be bringing reconciliation among people, Lord, that you've called us to reconciliation, not to division. Lord, when we should be at the forefront, the church should be at the forefront of, um, of that of reconciliation between other cultures and other ethnicities Lord, we should be the ones leading the way because you love us we are called to be one new man in christ we are called to love everyone we are called to be one in you and mm -hmm. lord just break those idols in our lives i just ask lord lord do what you need to do to humble us we've if this, if all the stuff going on doesn't, isn't humbling us, Lord, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us for focusing all of the pandemic, the civil unrest, all of this is, is all the things going on in the world. You're trying to wake us up. Lord, we, may we be awoken. Lord, wake us up. Wake us up to see you, not what we believe, not what we what has been ingrained in us. Mm -hmm. We just ask that we would have pure hearts, Lord. We would have hearts that beat for you and beat for others. That we would have wisdom to see how to walk in you. Mm -hmm. not, not in this world, not be of the world, but be of your kingdom. And Lord, Andrea said, the word awoken and i think about this too and i'm just as much as we need to pray about being blind against these problems in our country and in our world in this hour we also need to pray against being woke without the gospel lord there's a woke culture right now and it's just as out of line as the quote-unquote unwoke culture Lord, what we're praying for is a true gospel transformation, that your, true, that your church, that your bride would truly be transformed by the gospel in this area and not to be woke, but Lord, to be healing for the situation, every situation at hand, Lord. I mean, you have, you have, just so brought so many things to light and you just had we just had one this past week a police officer inadvertently shooting a man when she thought she had the taser in her hand lord there's a there's a there's a problem in our country and lord being woke ain't gonna fix it but being transformed by the gospel is gonna fix it and lord I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, like, you know, each culture, each, the, the unwoke culture, the woke culture, each one of these people, groups of people think they have an answer. Lord, we know the answer and he's you. He's Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer. And Lord, we pray for a deeper revelation of you. Lord, just break us of again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Lord, we, when we wrestle against flesh and blood, it's 
like two people going into combat, head-to-head -head combat, one-on-one, -on -one, and you're going to root for Team A or Team B or Person A or Person B in battle. Lord, but we're wrestling against powers and principalities and not these, not these things. Lord, we get caught up in being, in America especially, we get caught up in being right-wing conservatives or left-wing liberals. And we get caught up in these two views because we think of this battle as everything we see on earth. And Lord, it's not. We need to know what you want us to do in this hour. And Lord, you, you've called us to, you called us to love to something greater than we've ever been as human. Lord, so we, I pray against woke culture just as much as I pray against blindness in this area because I want to see you and I believe the church needs to see you in this hour. Lord, whether it's, whether it's immigrants, whether it's, it's racial police tensions, whether it's looking at how we've treated previous inhabitants of the land, you name it. We need to not be woke and not take the views of the world. And we need to take your view, Lord. And we need to take the low seat and say, how can I raise you up? Lord, you, you, you taught us in scripture. And I think we missed this too. And I've prayed it before and I'll pray it again. You've taught us in scripture to take the low seat so that you may exalt us at the right time, Lord. And I think we do this wrong. I think we look for your exaltation before we look for taking the low seat. Lord, break your church of that. Lord, the idea of taking the low seat was just like you, you said in the first verse, glorify me so that I may glorify you. Lord, teach us to take the low seat and to raise others up to esteem one other as greater than ourselves in this hour, Lord, and raise them up. Lord, we have the gospel. We have been covered in a blood of a perfect Savior who modeled laying down his life, though he could have easily done more than anything we could have imagined in any Avengers movie with laser beams or anything like that. He could have just obliterated us even faster than a snap from a, a Thanos. He could have done anything, but no, what did Jesus do? He said, Father, into my hands I commend my spirit. And he died for us. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he died for us. And he shed his blood like a lamb being led to a slaughter for us. And Lord, how did you glorify him? You brought, you raised him back up without anything that we could understand. You brought him back. You raised him back to life that we would have a new hope in you. And Lord, help us to remember that and not to think that just because you won a battle once long, long ago that we automatically have victory and, and like I said before our views are right when there are even members of the church with these opposing views Lord let us let us see what your view is let us learn to esteem others as greater than ourselves and remind us how you fought the battle that you suffered and you died on our behalf and Lord let us be willing to take low seats let us be willing to be humble in this hour so that we can break the true strongholds which the enemy has placed and not get caught up in the, the uh, whatever it is, the little pitter-patter of the left wing and the right wing in our country and whatever it is in other countries. Let us get caught up in doing what you want us to do to truly break those strongholds by being humble, by knowing that you suffered and died 
and by being willing to suffer and die to glorify you and Lord to Lord to not have opinions that are of either side of the world but just opinions that glorify you Lord and to speak a gospel which is so different than from anything we've understood in this hour a gospel that teaches these things to suffer to die to 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 lay down your life and to raise others up and esteem them as greater than yourself Lord let us use those weapons to break this war to break the enemies back in this war Lord that your name may be glorified and that souls may be won for you not by our being right but by you being victorious in your death and resurrection. Verses 25 and 26 say, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it, <clears throat> that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. And Lord, that's what we're called to. Mm -hmm. We are called to be in you. We are called to be one in you. We are called to glorify you. And we are called to be your love to the world, Lord. And that's that's who we want to be. Mm -hmm. Show us what it means to be one new man in Christ. Show us what it means ethnically to be one new man in Christ. Show us what it means politically to be one new man in Christ. Show us what it means between denominations of church, of your bride, to be one new man in Christ. <clears throat> Lord, show us how we can be one, how we can be in you, because you and the Father are in each other through poured out to us. Lord, show us how we can be in you. And Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that we have evidence of how you would pray for things. And Lord, we, I'm just reminded, I look at this prayer here and you being of all authority, don't, don't, just shout at anything and and, and get angry and, and yet there's still a place for that. But I mean, what I'm saying is you being of all authority still show that humility. Lord, you, you pray for everyone else. Your, even your prayer for yourself at the very beginning is... What you give me, Lord, I'm, or God, I'm going to give right back to you. That's, your prayer is always outward. Your prayer, even when you, when you ask for yourself, is so that I can turn around and give it right back to you by giving it back to those you've sent me to. Lord, 
show us, show us, Lord, how to be like that. Lord, there are so many needs, and I, and I want to just acknowledge all of the needs in our assembly and needs on, of people that we love who we are in relationship, Lord, and, and, and I put them all before you, Lord. I mean, from cancer needs in our body and in, in those with, with which we have relationship through you, Lord, we pray against them. Lord, we pray for your miraculous healing. Lord, we pray for your outpouring of your spirit, that those things would be broken and that a testimony of the miraculous healing power of Jesus would be, would be made known amongst doctors and, and amongst everybody around them. Lord, we pray that you would move miraculously over those things. Lord, we've seen people suffering so much from this pandemic, whether it's from the pandemic or what, but emotionally and struggling. Lord, and we pray, Lord, for the spirit of a sound mind. Lord, that they may have a testimony of Jesus gave me a sound mind in the midst of this. Lord, we pray for, for friends whose daughters are, are, are suffering right now with illness. And we pray for, Lord, just, I mean, we've been, even had our dogs being afflicted in this hour. You name it, it's going on, Lord. We've seen marriages struggling. We've seen, we've seen so much going on. And we pray for every one of those things, Lord. But we pray them not that they may have peace or that our, that our temporal, and, and, I, and I just see this, we often pray them because we really don't want our world disrupted. But Lord, we pray that you would have victory over these things to disrupt our world because we we want it to bring glory to your name father lord so all of the sicknesses that our church is dealing with and that our that our beloved member or body around the country and around the world are dealing with lord we actually pray that you would do it not to comfort us lord but to glorify your name Lord, we pray to break those illnesses, to glorify your name, and to disrupt our world by giving, a, giving your healing and doing something that we can't explain any other way, but we have to proclaim your name. <coughs> Excuse me. Lord, we just pray that, we pray for sound minds too in this hour, Lord, and that will disrupt our day. That will disrupt our lives. Lord, we pray that you would break all the struggles emotionally and, and, and mentally that people are going through, that your name would be glorified, that Jesus freed me, Jesus overcame my insecurities, overcame my loneliness, overcame my brokenness, overcame my bitterness, overcame my anxiety, overcame my depression, and all of the things, Lord, that, that struggle, people, people struggle with me mentally and emotionally with right now. Lord, we pray against those that your name would be glorified and that a new testimony of the miraculous power of the blood of Jesus would be brought out in this hour. And Lord, just as just as it's in John, you know, you don't you don't pray that you would take us out of the struggles, but you that we wouldn't be taken out of them, but we would be taken through of them, I guess is the the, the way I'm trying to pray it. You know, keep us from the evil one. Don't take, don't take us out of the world, but keep us from the evil one. That's how you pray. Lord, the evil one has been doing everything he can. We've talked about major issues in our country. and We've prayed about them. Lord, but I mean, he's even attacking our children. And we have, we have members of our body whose children are suffering tremendously. And Lord, we just ask that, you would break the power of the evil one 
we have the evil ones even attacking our dogs and our pets and you know I mean you name it we just pray that you would break that Lord and give us grace and strength to walk through it Lord so often we want you to take us out of a situation Lord we're just praying that you would take us through it and that your name would be glorified Lord and that we would overcome the evil one in this hour and that Lord, through that, you disrupt our lives with another testimony of your great power. So, yeah, we were actually, I didn't even look at the time until I think we started moving. I didn't catch that. We are, um, it is about, I, don't, I can't really see without my glasses, but it's somewhere a couple minutes before 11 o'clock. I can tell you that much. Um, so we are going to stop here. And um, we just thank you, those of you who joined us for, you know, the, uh, this act of worship by praying together with us for the church. We thank you for that. And uh, we're going to take a couple minute break. Pastor Oz and Pastor Jan are going to pop back up here on the live stream from their home and they're going to bring the message to us. And we just pray, Father, give them the words to speak and open our ears to hear. And we just put that into your hands in Jesus name. Amen. And that's it. We'll see you later. Thank you.